Hi, everyone. Um, we're going to get started here in a couple minutes for the Engage MI Fundraising Challenge webinar. Um, before we get started, if you all could look at your GoToWebinar control panel, there's a questions box. Um, if you could type in there and let me know that you can hear me, I would greatly appreciate it. And we'll just sit on here for a couple minutes while we wait for everyone else to join. Perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. We're just going to wait one more minute um, and then we'll get started. Okay, it is two o'clock um, and it looks like Paul just joined too. Hi, Paul. Hello. Um, so now that we're all here, um, I just want to introduce myself and say that um, my name is Dawn and I'm going to be leading you through today's presentation. Um, I have a few housekeeping items to note before, um, you know, giving the floor over to Paul. Um, first thing I want to note is that the webinar is going to be recorded and it'll be posted in the toolkit on the Engage MI Fundraising Challenge site um, under the resources tab. And then as a lot of you um, just utilized, you can go to the GoToWebinar chat module at any time uh, to send across questions and um, I'll be able to look at those and uh, answer as many as I can after the webinar. Um, so, like I just said, I have Reverend Paul Perez on the webinar from the Michigan Conference of the United Methodist Church. Um, hi, Paul. Hi, Don. So, we're Mighty Cause is really excited to be partnering with you guys to host um, this challenge. So, um, if you want to say a few words, then I can jump into the um, rest of the presentation. Yeah, thanks, Don, and we're excited to be partnering with you. Um, hi, everybody. I think most of you uh, um, know who I am. I work for the Michigan Conference as Associate Director for Mission and Ministry, and one of my responsibilities is to oversee and administer our Engage Michigan um, Mission Engagement and Giving Program. So this fundraising challenge, this uh, uh, collaboration with Mighty Cause is a experiment for us, a real shift away from our usual congregational based giving to uh, more individual donors and using a social media platform to do that. So thank you for joining us in this experiment and for, and for participating. I'm really excited about the potential and um, really excited to partner with Mighty Cause who's gonna kind of uh, increase our capacity to be able to do fundraising in this way. Each of you is really doing tremendous uh, uh, mission and ministry work across the state, working with some of our most vulnerable communities. And I think that each of you really has a story to tell um, and a way to invite um, uh, folks from across the state to join you in your mission and also to donate. And my hope is that this will enable you to not only engage some of your current supporters, but also to engage new supporters as well. So with that, thanks again. I'm going to turn it back to Dawn so she can get the webinar started. Thanks, Paul. Um, I personally am very excited to be one of the leads on this project. Um, I'm based in Grand Rapids, so it's really exciting to me that um, I get to kind of help uh, facilitate some of the giving for Michigan, just because it's 
the best state. So there you go. Um, let's see. So um, I just want to reiterate that um, Mighty Cause is ready to provide technical support um, to everyone as you gear up for um, the giving event. Um, so if you have any questions as you're getting ready, or even if a supporter has a question, um, I wanted to let you know that our support team is here to help, um, along with myself. Um, their email is support at mightycause.com. Um, and just to give you a little background, Mighty Cause is a fully functional nonprofit fundraising suite that organizations use um, 365 days a year to raise money for their causes. Um, we've been around since 2006, and we're actually one of the first platforms to host Giving Days. So we've been doing this kind of event for a long time, um, and we're really excited to host the Engage MI Fundraising Challenge. So to just kind of go through some of the agenda points um, for today, we're um, going to be walking through the Fundraising Challenge basics, um, and then we're going to be talking about getting started, um, basically registering and navigating your nonprofit page on the platform. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go over the prizes available, um, and then we're going to move into giving event strategy. Um, and then, of course, at the end, we'll do a Q&A session. Um, and because we've got a lot to go through today, if you have a question while I'm presenting, please feel free to just type it into the questions box, um, and then I'll be able to make time for it at the end. Okay. So challenge basics. The Engage MI Fundraising Challenge is in its inaugural year. Um, it's about a three week long event that runs from October 14th to November 1st. Uh, so it's coming up pretty soon. Um, registration closes on October 7th. So if you haven't registered yet, um, you'll wanna be sure to do so soon. Um, the really awesome thing about this giving event is that there is about $13,000 worth of prize money um, at stake and lots and lots of opportunities to win. Um, we'll go into prizes available a little bit later on today. So how do fundraising challenges work? Um, a fundraising challenge is a unique campaign presented by a host organization that allows organizations to compete with other nonprofits, um, or you can compete against your own goal uh, to win prize money. So fundraising challenges are an exciting way for you to engage sponsors, community partners, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraisers, and more. Um, to spread the word about your organization and mission and raise funds for your cause. Um, the limited time frame that these fundraising challenges offer creates a sense of urgency that donors tend to respond to, and the prizes available gives you fresh messaging opportunities every week. So getting started. Um, first things first, if you haven't done so yet, um, you're going to need to register your organization for the challenge. Um, there are some additional steps for fiscally sponsored organizations um, if you're not a 501c3, but we do have pretty comprehensive instructions on the registration site. Um, so if you have any questions at all pertaining to registration, you can email support at mightycause.com. Um, Paul did email out uh, the link to registration, um, but of course, if you need help at all, then you can email support as well, and we can give you the link, um, but it's really easy. You just click the register button, and it'll take you right where you need to go. Um, basically, to register, you need to claim your organization on Mighty Cause and then follow the prompts. Um, setup is really easy and quick, and um, once you're registered uh, on Mighty Cause, then you'll unlock the registration questions for Engage MI and can submit the form once completed. And then after you register, you'll receive a confirmation message. Um, approval typically happens within 24 to 48 hours. Um, and then after you register and submit the form, you'll also be able to add administrators to your organization's account on Mighty Cause. So multiple people will be able to access your page and help run your campaign um, if that's how you decide to do it. So navigating your dashboard. So once you've filled out and submitted your registration, um, you'll need to complete the items on your to-do list. Um, this list is located on the home screen on your nonprofit profile right under your metrics. Um, there's five basic items to complete. You're going to need a background image to your page. Um, we, we do have some gallery um, stock background images if you want to use those. Um, you'll want to upload your logo. Um, that's going to be what represents you throughout the Engage MI fundraising challenge. Um, you'll want to add a story. 
Um, that tells visitors to your profile about what your nonprofit organization does. Um, and then you'll also want to build a thank you page to thank donors and set up electronic fund transfer uh, so you can get your disbursements um, through direct deposit. Uh, if you, there are links for each of those uh, to-dos um, on that to-do list. So if you click on those links, you'll be taken right to the spot on your profile where you can complete the tasks. Um, so it's really easy for you to complete the list. Um, and this, you know, this this stuff isn't required, but um, profiles that are filled out generally get more donations on Mighty Cause. So before you get into the weeds of planning your campaign um, or start thinking about social media and stuff like that, um, you'll definitely want to take the time to complete this list. Um, it's a great jumping off point um, for sure. Uh, and of course, if you need help um, or are unsure how to complete any of the items, um, I'm probably going to say this email a million times during the presentation, but you can always email our support team at support at mightycause.com. Um, we also have a support library where we have walkthroughs and videos that can help you out as well. Um, and then I also want to recommend taking some time to get to know your dashboard. Um, your dashboard, which we like to call your Mighty Cause Manager, is um, the like column of items on the left that appears, you'll see in the little um, GIF, like right there, home profile. Um, that shows up when you're logged in um, and you're in your nonprofit's account. Um, once you log in, you'll automatically land on your welcome screen or home screen, which is where you'll find the to-do list, um, as well as metrics for your nonprofit, um, which, you know, those are kind of fun things to see, like how many people have visited your page, how much money you've raised recently, things like that. Um, and then under profile, you can edit your page in the page editor. Um, so that's where you can add your logo, your um, the background image, your story text. Um, you can also adjust your page settings. Um, the settings are where you can set your goal for the challenge um, to basically let people know what kind of, um, excuse me, what you're going for. Um, and then it also, once you set a goal, it enables a progress bar on your page so people can track and see how close you are to your goal really easily. Um, you can also go to the live view um, to see how your page will look to visitors within that profile section. Um, and you can do that without logging out of your account, which is really cool. Um, and then below that on your dashboard is the report section. The report section is your one-stop shop for everything related to donation management. Um, you're going to be able to preview and export your donation reports, um, and those donation reports are pretty comprehensive, so, um, you know, it tells you everything about your donors that you're going to need to know, and it downloads in the CSV, so you can upload it into your, um, any CRM that you're using. Um, and then, uh, the report section is also where you'll be able to manage your disbursements. Um, and like I mentioned, part of your to-do list is setting up that EFT. Um, and, you know, just to let you know, signing up for EFT allows you to receive your funds faster, which I'm sure everyone appreciates. Um, funds are also dispersed by check, um, but there is a $5 admin fee for check disbursement. So, um, you know, to get your money quicker and, um, you know, with no fee, then signing up for EFT is the way to go. Um, <clears throat> And then, of course, if you have any questions about fund disbursement, um, please email support at mightycause.com. Um, and then next on your Mighty Cause Manager is the fundraising view. Uh, this is where your donor experience section comes into play. Um, we're going to talk about that in a few slides. Um, this is the fundraising view is also where you can find um, your matching grants tool, which I am also going to go into more detail about later on. Um, and then uh, settings is the last uh, item on this this uh, Mighty Cause Manager, and that's where you can manage your nonprofit settings, um, like your URL. Uh, you can customize that, um, and then it also gives um, you um, some more admin control, like uh, if you want to add an admin um, from your organization, you can do that here as well. So. Um, as I'm sure you all know, your profile um, is going to be the face of your nonprofit for uh, the Engage MI fundraising challenge. So you're really going to want to make sure it looks good and it represents you well. Um, and just so you know, your profile link is the link that you'll share with your supporters um, to ask them to donate to your Engage MI fundraising challenge page. Um, so to share your page, just um, copy and paste the URL uh, 
into an email or social post, post or wherever you're advertising the campaign. Um, if you're not sure what that means or you're having trouble um, like making sure or want to just confirm that you're sending the right URL, then you can email our support team and we'll make sure you have the, um, the right link. Um, so um, as you're going through your to-do list, uh, you're going to want to customize your profile to match your brand. Um, you can change your theme color, um, which on this example on the slide, it's that teal blue. Um, which all the buttons are the teal blue, the progress bar is the teal blue. So you can update your theme color to match um, uh, your logo. You can upload media to your gallery um, to add some visual interest on your page. Um, and your story or description is really the centerpiece of your page. So you're gonna wanna um, spend a little bit of time on that. A lot of organizations, um, they'll just use their mission and then add some photos of um, either recent events that they've had or, um, you know, any basically anything that you've done um, in recent marketing material you can add on to here um, and you can also add videos uh, but just to note you'll need to upload the video to YouTube or Vimeo first uh, but then once you can do that you can embed it in your story section and then people can watch it right there on your page um, the that story section is really where you can go in depth about your work um, and, and make that strong appeal to donors. Um, you know, tell them why your organization needs their support um, and show the impact of your work. Um, so I would really recommend spending some time customizing this profile. It, you know, it doesn't have to take a ton of time, um, but do spend some time um, because we found that, you know, the more work you put into it and make it look nice, then chances are you're gonna do better in terms of, you know, donor engagement. Um, and, you know, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, but when your profile or the, the page where people are actually coming to make donations looks like it hasn't shown, been shown any love, then, you know, it, it kind of um, confuses people. Um, so you'll want to make sure it looks really good. So um, I mentioned previously donor experience. Um, one of the really awesome things about Mighty Cause is that your nonprofit has quite a bit of control over the donation process. Um, which is unique among fundra fundraising platforms. Um, so from, um, you know, from that Mighty Cause Manager dashboard, you can access um, this donor experience tool. Um, this uh, can, it allows you to opt into collecting information that you want from donors, like uh, addresses or phone numbers. Um, here, you can also set up custom suggested donation amounts. Um, and add descriptions to help tie those amounts to items or services your nonprofit provides, um, which basically strengthens your appeal to donate. So if you if you found that certain donation levels um, really appeal to your donors, or um, for certain campaigns, if you say, look, I really my first suggested amount is twenty five dollars, or my first suggested amount is fifty, and go up from there. Um, if you found that you've had good experience with certain levels, then at in this donor experience section, you're able to adjust those levels to fit what your organization finds works best for you, um, and then you're also able to add those descriptions. So um, you know. Uh, $50 feeds um, two families um, this Thanksgiving or something like that. Uh, so you can kind of uh, make it more tangible to the donor. Um, the donor experience uh, also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without actually making a test donation. So you can see what your final process looks like and use that to edit yourself if needed. Um, so the donor experience is also where you'll go to set up your thank you page which uses the same text editor um, that's in your story section on your profile. Um, so you can add text or links, um, you can add a video or image, um, and you, you can also add a custom call to action button that tells donors where you'd like them to go next. So it's really um, a very comprehensive way for you to make sure that your donors are getting the kind of experience that you want them to get out of this campaign. Because um, the better experience that they have um, and, you know, the faster they're thanked, um, they're, they're more likely to come back and donate again. Um, and one, one idea um, would be asking them for the call to action button, um, ask them to sign up for your email list. Uh, instead of just like directing them back to your site to like learn more and making it general, give them a specific call to action. Um, when they have a specific action, they're more likely to take take action on it. Um, so, you know, if you have that thank you page and you say, um, 
you know, sign up for our email list and you link out to the email list form, um, sign up on your website, then that's something that you could do during this process as, as well. Okay, so um, we're gonna move on um, into talking about all of the really awesome prizes that the Engage uh, MI Fundraising Challenge has to offer. Um, and I also want to talk a little bit about how you can aim to win them since I'm, um, you know, that's really one of the most exciting things about this challenge. So the Engage in My Fundraising Challenge is offering grand prize grants to the top three places for both large and small organizations on the leaderboard. Um, this division gives a lot of nonprofits a chance to win, um, which is really exciting. Um, and there's going to be leaderboards for the grand prizes on the live event site. So as soon as the challenge begins, participating organizations um, will start getting tracked by the dollars they've raised. Um, now, it's important to mention um, that only online donations made through the Mighty Cause platform count for leaderboard totals, um, so no offline donations count, like cash or checks. Um, so basically, you know, if you want to win a grand prize, you're going to want to make sure that you push your donors to give online because those offline donations don't count. Um, you can certainly record a check that's given to you. Um, we have a space for that. Um, you can find it in your Mighty Cause Manager um, to be able to uh, record how much you've gotten from, um, you know, somebody who didn't want to give online. Um, it, that amount just won't be reflected in your leaderboard totals. It will be reflected on your profile page if you've enabled that progress bar, um, but it won't be reflected in within the um, direct competition with the other organizations um, who are here. Um, and just for a little bit of background, the reason that we don't um, allow offline donations to count toward those prizes is because we don't and can't verify offline donations. Um, so keeping it online only just makes it easier in terms of prize handling. Um, and then the leaderboard is gonna reflect your cumulative total from the time the challenge begins at 9 a.m. on October 14th. Um, so it's a running total of everything you've raised online. Um, and then here you're engaging in some of that friendly competition for those top prizes. Um, so as you can see, um, for both small and large, first place is $1,000, second place is $700, and third place is $300. Um, we're also giving away uh, bonus prizes. So there's a lot of um, bonuses available for you guys to win. Um, and, you know, just FYI, don't stress about writing any of this down. Um, we, uh, all of these prizes and the method of entries and dates associated with them are gonna be on the challenge site under the prizes and rules tab. So you'll be able to reference them at any time. Um, so we've got a kickoff challenge, which runs the day the challenge starts. Um, we've got, uh, Eat a week long bonus for one bonus one, two, and three. Um, so we've got bonuses running those whole weeks, and then we've got a final countdown bonus. Um, and then we've also got a video contest. Um, so again, more details, um, rules, links, um, and you know, all of the information will be on the prizes and rules uh, tab on the Engage in My Fundraising Challenge site. So you don't have to, you know, remember any of this. You can just reference it there. Um, and um, one thing that I really love that spurs competition is the live leaderboards for these bonus prizes too. So not only will the grand prizes have live leaderboards, but these bonuses will also have live leaderboards. Um, that way, those leaderboards, they're going to help you see where you stand at any time. Um, the key to winning them is in getting your donors invested in helping you climb the leaderboard. Um, so you'll want to make sure you keep tabs on your position on the leaderboard for, you know, the bonuses that you choose to participate in. Um, that way you're keeping your donors and supporters updated. Um, and then continually emphasize to them how much is at stake. How much could this extra prize money do for your charity? What would that help you achieve? Make sure you tie everything back into your overall messaging about what you do and why you do it to really get people excited about helping you win that money. Um, another trick is to just concentrate on sustaining momentum, keeping the fundraising going, and starting and finishing strong. Um, having these bonuses, um, you, using them for your messaging, they're really, really great messaging tools. Um, they give you something fresh and new to talk about um, to your donors, so you're not just giving them the same message throughout the three weeks, because um, three weeks is relatively long, so you're going to want to make sure that you space out your fundraising momentum, and these bonuses are definitely a great way for you to be able to do that. 
So um, challenge campaign strategy. So now we're gonna jump in and talk through some ways that you can strategize to win some of those awesome prizes. Um, and just so you know, if you win a grand prize, um, you, you're you still eligible to win bonus prizes too. So you can win multiple prizes, um, which you know kind of makes it even sweeter. So you'll wanna go after as many as you, as you possibly can. Um, so first thing is you're gonna wanna use the nonprofit toolkit resources that we have for you. You have access to these really great tools um, and the toolkit, it has a lot of tips and tricks and FAQs. Um, it's got walkthroughs. It also has email templates and social templates that you can use um, to help you get inspired um, and figure out how to promote your campaign. Um, the nonprofit toolkit is also where you'll be able to find today's training recording, um, as well as logos and graphics that you'll be able to download to start um, tying your brand into the Engage MI Fundraising Challenge brand. So you'll definitely want to check out the toolkit if you haven't already and refer back to it as you're planning your campaign. Um, and you know, if you need help at all accessing the toolkit, um, again, our support team is here to help you find those links that you need. So a couple quick strategy tips. Um, since the Engage in My Fundraising Challenge is a multi-week event, um, like I said, the trick to making the most of it is to sustain your fundraising momentum. Um, one great way to do that um, and to make sure your campaign is on track is to set mini goals for your nonprofit to help um, basically generate buzz and build excitement. Um, and the really great thing about the Engage in My Fundraising Challenge is that those weekly prizes, um, you can win multiple of them. So you can utilize you know, those mini goals and those bonus bonus challenges to help sustain that fundraising momentum and keep people excited about helping you win. Um, you can also utilize the leaderboard and your position on the leaderboard for not only the grand prizes, but also those bonuses. Um, you can utilize those uh, to like let people know, hey, we're we're currently in second place. We don't, you know, we want the biggest prize. We want to be in first place. We only need, you know, 300 more dollars to get first place. Help us get there. Um, let people know um, where you're at um, with what your goal is. Um, and then of course, you'll also wanna think about your overall fundraising goal and then what you're gonna need to raise each week to get there. So that's kind of a good starting point. If you think, okay, how much do I wanna raise overall during these three weeks? And then what am I gonna need to do to raise um, you know, that much? Will I have to raise X amount week one, X amount week two? Um, you can also uh, kind of work those um, amounts around the bonuses. So if you say, look, I really want to participate in the kickoff challenge and week two, and then the final countdown challenge. So you can kind of strategize, um, you know, how much money you want to raise in between um, or on all of those days that you want to participate. Um, you can work that into what your overall goal is for your organization. Um, and then something else that you can do to get your campaign rolling is asking for seed donations. Um, seed donations are donations from people um, in your nonprofit's inner circle that essentially just break the ice with donors and help get the ball rolling. Um, so like people to ask for a seed donation would be your board, your staff, volunteers, um, or really anyone else at your nonprofit who's really engaged in your work. Um, they don't have to be huge donations by any means. They could be $10, $25, like it can be small stuff. Um, it's basically just getting a little bit in the bank um, by you know reaching out to those people um, to help your campaign move forward and get donations coming in. So another great strategy for driving donations um, during this giving event is securing a matching grant. Um, a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your nonprofit leverages to bring in um, other smaller donations by offering um, it up as match. Uh, so for instance, if you had someone willing to give you $1,000, um, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, um, you could use it as a matching grant. Um, you'd take that $1,000 and say to your supporters, okay, so between this day and this day, any donations um, will be matched up to $1,000, which basically allows your donors to double their donation and then obviously allows you to double your donation too. Um, so you can do a lot within that Mighty Cause Matching Grant tool that um, I mentioned earlier. Uh, again, you can find it um, within your Mighty Cause Manager when you're logged into your um, organization account. Um, there's just, there's lots of options with the tool um, for how to structure your match. 
Uh, and then, you know, a, a lot of matches are usually one-to-one, -one, but not all matches have to be that one-to-one, -one. Um, you know, which basically means if someone gives, you know, $1,000, then $1,000 um, needs to be matched. You can do two-to-one matches. You can do three-to-one matches. Um, you can also match a percentage of each donation, or you can match a certain number of donations. Um, so, for example, like the week two bonus challenge is um, unique donors. So if you wanted to have a match available to try and win that bonus, you could say, um, you know, look, I, I need to get 100 donations within this day, um, and then we'll get an additional $1,000 for our nonprofit. Um, so, you know, that kind of match, um, you know, helps you actually drive donation volume and traffic. Um, and then it also helps you get closer to your goal of um, not only funds raised, but then winning one of the bonus challenges. Um, and then also a fun thing to note, you can post multiple grants at a time um, and you can post them in sequence. So if you set, so, you know, you can set a bunch of grants to fire one after the other. So there's, you know, constant action, um, totally optional, but it is, it is something you're able to do. Um, so essentially, since a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, you'll want to follow the same process as you would when securing major gifts. Um, you want to make sure you're prospecting, cultivating, and asking. So people who you should consider as prospects for a matching grant are board members, and that could be one board member. It can be the whole board, um, like, creates a match, so they each put in, um, you know, $100 or a certain number um, of money. Excuse me. Um, you, you'll also want to make sure you go to your major gift donors who've given large donations um, to your nonprofit in the past. Uh, and then another option is corporate sponsors. Um, corporate sponsors are a really great way um, to, you know, get a match because it's a really fun, proactive way for them to get involved um, in, you know, a really public way. Um, and it, it draws attention to their corporate philanthropy, which businesses like. So um, you can, on one of the really cool features on the matching tool is being able to um, have a mon um, match be sponsored by something. So you can go to corporate sponsors and say, look, I would really love to get this amount as um, a match to utilize during this campaign. Um, and we would be happy to put, um, add you as the sponsor. Um, you can add their logo to any emails that you're sending so people really know that that corporate partner is involved. Um, so in the coming weeks, you want to make sure you're making your asks and shoring up um, the details of the matches that you'd like to have. Um, and again, you can have one, you can have more than one match running at a time. Um, so if you get a lot of great responses, um, you don't have, feel like, you know, don't feel like you have to pick and choose one. Um, and then again, the matching grant tool is located um, within that Mighty Cause Manager um, sidebar under the fundraising section. So moving on from matching grants, um, I do want to talk a little bit about ambassadors. Um, ambassadors are people who are usually in your nonprofit's um, inner circle who can help boost your campaign. Uh, so that includes, um, again, your board members, your volunteers, um, especially the volunteers who are highly engaged, um, staff members, et cetera. Um, utilizing these ambassadors um, can help you break out of your list of existing supporters, and it, it really helps you engage new people, um, people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to, which I know every nonprofit, that is their one of their number one goals, um, getting new donors. Um, ambassadors can help you do that um, in a few different ways. Um, that you can either have them just share the link on your page um, with their social circle to ask them to donate, or you can have um, ambassadors for your organization set up a fundraising page um, to help solicit donations directly for your organization. Um, so if you have a board member, for instance, who's very well connected, this can be a really big boost. Um, they can really help you by getting involved in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for your organization during this Engage MI uh, fundraising challenge. Um, the, Mighty the Mighty Cause platform is actually set up for really easy peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, so if this is something you haven't done before, this would be a really great way to kind of introduce yourself to it, um, see the functionality and, you know, see if it works for your organization. Um, it's just a really great way to acquire new donors. And so it's, it's definitely something we recommend everyone try. 
Um, so if you did want to try it, then you, all you would do would you ask, you'd ask your ambassadors, which again are people close to your organization, people in your inner circle, board members, volunteers, staff members. Um, you'd ask them to set up a fundraising page for your nonprofit on Mighty Cause um, for this challenge. Um, this this may sound like a big ask, but it's often a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters, um, and it allows them to tell their own story about your nonprofit. Um, you know how they came to work with you, and and really why your work is important to them. Um, and you know this having them do that, it doesn't distract or draw attention away from your campaign. Um, they're operating alongside your campaign. They're working with you, um, reaching out to people they know personally for donations. Um, which in most cases are their friends and colleagues and family. And these aren't people that your nonprofit would normally have access to to solicit don for donations. Um, so you're actually picking up new donors through this peer-to-peer -peer, um, functionality most of the time. Um, so, you know, again, for people like your board, volunteer staff, um, maybe program alumni, um, this can be a really great way for them to get involved. Uh, without just being asked to give money. Um, and it, it just, it can make a much more um, meaningful impact for them. Um, and, you know, rather than just making a donation or sharing a link, it allows them to tell their story, which really is what most people in this world want to do. They just want people to listen to them and they want you to know what they're about. Um, so having like, having that ask of instead of donate, help me fundraise, um, it's, it can be a really good part of the stewarding process. You know, you're you're building and sustaining a relationship with that supporter. You're you're kind of taking your relationship to the next step. Um, and you know, we if if you're really not if you're still not really sure about it, um, we have seen some nonprofits get some good peer-to-peer -peer, um, action going by just inviting people on social media um, or sending an email asking them for their for their help. Um, just, you know, instead of donate, ask them to fundraise. Um, and maybe maybe you start off with asking them to fundraise before the challenge starts. Um, that way you can help them get their pages set up um, and, you know, help them with, you know, what their plan should be. Um, and then maybe your call to action afterwards is, is that regular donate um, call to action. Um, but for younger people um, who have a big social network and um, are really comfortable online, but you know maybe they don't have a lot of cash to give, the peer-to-peer -peer option um, is really an excellent way for them to help out and make a meaningful contribution. Um, so again, to help make things easier for your ambassadors, you're gonna um, wanna make sure that you're giving them images. Um, if they need talking points, have some handy. Um, have logos for them. Um, you know, you could even offer them to again set up their pages. Um, but uh, you know, nonprofits that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising do tend to raise more money. So it's definitely worth talking about how you can incorporate um, that kind of functionality into your campaign strategy for this year's Engage MI fundraising challenge. So, spreading the word. Um, as I'm sure you all know, your email list um, is probably going to be one of your most important tools during the Engage in My Fundraising Challenge um, because emails are a direct line to your supporters. So unlike social media, um, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way or preventing people from seeing what you send them uh, because unless they've unsubscribed from your emails, it'll end up right in their inbox and most likely send them a notification on their phone. Um, so I want to talk for a little bit about email strategy because it's going to be an important part during this campaign. Um, so first in general, you'll want to keep emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Um, people are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them. So um, we highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot or give on a regular basis. Um, you could segment into one-time donors, um, people who have never utilized your services, um, you know, who, or who have utilized your services but never donated. Um, you could segment uh, your board, your volunteers, and so on. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure your emails are short because most people these days read their emails on their phones, and then you're also going to want, want to make sure the right message gets to the right people so that they're more likely to take action. Um, you, you don't need to craft entirely new emails to each of these groups, but you can tweak small things about the emails um, 
just to make it more personal for that group. Um, so basically make sure you identify your key segments um, and then figure out how to tailor your message to them. Uh, when an email is tailored um, to who the recipient is and you know the relationship they have with your organization, they are much more likely to read it and take action on it. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to pay close attention to is the timing of your emails. Um, especially if you're aiming to win the kickoff challenge or one of the weekly prizes, uh, I would recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand um, and make sure you have a template email ready for things you need to send um, like out on the day of, like uh, a blast email asking people to help you get to your campaign goal, you know, letting them know the challenge has started um, or an announcement that you've won a prize. As I mentioned before, um, most people read their email on their phones these days, so I would definitely make sure you choose a mobile-friendly email template and then definitely test it out beforehand. The last thing you wanna do is um, do all this work to create a beautiful email that looks great on desktop and then have it sent to somebody's phone and your, you know, all of the spacing is, is just totally messed up. So you definitely wanna make sure you test everything out. Uh, and then lastly, your call to actions um, in anything uh, should be clear and action oriented. So, you know, give now, donate now, help us today. Um, more passive call to actions like um, thanks for donating or please contribute. Um, those aren't as effective. So you just want to make sure you're crystal clear and provide that urgency. The, the One of the really great things about um, the Engage MI fundraising challenge is the fact that uh, it's only three weeks. Um, so you have the ability to use that sense of urgency. And then of course, with every bonus challenge, those are limited as well in, in their time frame. So you have like that kind of urgency on your side to be able to uh, uh, push your donors. Um, so for social media, um, for a high stakes campaign like this, um, we just really recommend staying in your comfort zone um, and going where your audience is. So what I mean by that is if you have a thousand followers on your Facebook page, but you only have a handful on Instagram, um, then you probably should spend way more time and effort on promoting your campaign on Facebook than on Instagram. Um, make sure you put your efforts into the platform where you're most likely to reach people and have an impact. Um, and uh, Again, I definitely recommend scheduling any posts you can ahead of time just to save yourself a lot of trouble during the challenge uh, and leading up to it. So, you know, get your key content scheduled with Facebook's publishing tools or Creator Studio. Uh, go into TweetDeck and schedule your tweets um, and really save any live posting for stuff that needs to be done, like thanking your donor, um, updates on your progress or those prize announcements. Um, and then to that end, um, it, it might be a good idea to assign a point person to monitor your social media um, or really, you know, your communications in general. Um, that way you can quickly respond uh, to comments uh, and interact positively with your followers. Uh, since it is important on social media um, and interaction can also help you in terms of the algorithm, um, most platforms do show priority to post with lots of engagement. Um, and then, you know, if you're able, sometimes it's helpful to budget a little money um, to boost some posts or promote some tweets. Um, and really on social media, $20 for an ad can can really go a long way. Um, you'll want to make sure your ad, um, if you do go in this direction, is targeted properly. Um, and if you aren't sure how to target an ad, you can always default to targeting the people who like your page or already follow you. Um, in terms of the type of content um, that will do well on social media, it really depends a bit on the platform. Um, but in general, photos and videos do really well. Um, and you know, you may want to consider doing something out of the box like a Facebook Live video or um, a watch party for a campaign video to help generate some buzz um, while delivering that algorithm-friendly content. Um, and especially, I've seen a lot of positive reactions to the Facebook Live videos, and people can always go back and watch them again. But when, you know, and one other thing to know is like people love behind the scenes videos. So if you do a Facebook Live behind the scenes of your organization, um, even just, even just if you're just walking around introducing people and saying, this is so-and-so, they do this, um, that people love that stuff. So, you know, little things like that um, to kind of make it exciting. Or if you didn't want to be live, you can always just do um, a post about certain people or the things that you're working on. Um, but 
but try, try and make sure that you have um, every one of your posts has some sort of photo or video so that you can get that, that good engagement um, with your supporters. Um, oh, and then finally, when you're planning your campaign, um, make sure that you follow up. Um, following up is super important. Um, you know, when you're planning your content, you'll also want to plan your thank you to donors. Um, things like making a video or a photo of your staff, um, that can be really great for this. Uh, be sure to talk about the impact of the funds you raised um, and just close the loop on your campaign. Um, so like if you were fundraising for something specific, like a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something like that, or like a program, um, you'll, you'll want to send emails periodically on your progress. Um, and then, of course, you'll want to make sure you've got an onboard, onboarding plan in place for those new donors um, so that they come back to donate again. Um, so if you collect addresses, maybe mailing them a welcome packet um, would be a great way to get them onboarded. Uh, you can also create an automated email journey where they can get more information about what you do uh, and why it's important to support your work. Oops. Okay. Uh, so support for Mighty Cause. Um, as you know, as we wrap this up, um, I I just really want to make sure that our support team's contact information is here for you to reference. Um, they're a really great resource before and during the challenge for anything campaign related. Um, you know, if you need help setting up your EFT, um, if you need some help figuring out how to strategize around the weekly bonuses, um, or you, you really, if you need, if your donor needs a receipt resent, um, then you can reach out to them anytime. Um, their email is up here, um, and then their phone number is too. So they provide not only email, but also phone support if you need any help. Okay, um, there was several questions that came in. So let me um, just kind of take a second to look through those. Some of them look like they're repetitive. Um, so let me take a second to look through those and then I will um, answer the questions that I can. Um, so hold on one second. Okay, all really good questions. Um, so first question is basically, how are large and small organization sizes determined? Um, I don't remember that off the top of my head. Um, Paul, do you have an answer to that? If not, it's definitely something we'll get on the website and we'll be out there for everyone ahead of time. Yes, the, the registration asks for each organization to report their budget. So we were using um, the size of budget to segment into large or small. Okay, so after everyone registers and registration is closed, then um, that'll determine what that break is. Yep, correct. Okay, perfect. Um, and then the next question that I had, and of course, if anyone has questions during this section right now, please feel free to write them in. Um, so how many bonuses can one org win? Um, so right now um, we have it, there's no limit for the number of bonuses that you can win. Um, you know, we might, if, if there's like lots of organizations who apply um, to participate and are registered, then we may put um, sometimes we'll put restrictions on it, so like you can only win two, but right now there's no limit. Um, what I would do is um, I would definitely check the um, prizes and rules tab on the Engage in My Fundraising site. Um, I would check that, um, you know, periodically to make sure that nothing has changed and everything is still, you know, the same, you know, as in any org could win any number of prizes. Um, but I don't anticipate that changing, but just in case, it's always good to check. Um, and, you know, we'll let you know for sure if there's, there are, there are any restrictions that are put in place, but right now there are none. Let's see. So what would be the cost, um, for an ambassador to set up a peer-to-peer, -peer, um, functionality on Mighty Cause? That's a great question. Um, there's no cost. So, um, there's no setup fee um, or anything like that for people who are joining your organization to help you fundraise. Um, 
they all they need to do is on your organization profile page there's a button that says um fundraise all they need to do is click that and then it'll walk them through the prompts of setting up their own fundraising page. Um, and it's it's really easy. They just have to like they can add a picture, they can add their own story. Um, if you, you know, have a group of people that you want to specifically appeal to um, for like being an ambassador for your for your organization, you can send them, you know, their own little like fundraiser toolkit where you send them, you know, a couple logos or pictures that they can use, suggestions on what they can include in their story, like why, you know, why are you connected to us? Um, you know, why did you start, uh, you know, volunteering with our organization? You know, how does our mission affect you? Um, just kind of um, things to get their, you know, their thoughts rolling, but they're, it's totally free for them to um, set up their fundraiser on, on the platform connected with your organization. let's see um can the number of organizations signing up be shared to the group i do not have that organization or that number in front of me um i don't think it's private but i know that i don't have that in front of me right now yeah it, this is paul it's not private from my end and and i don't i haven't i don't have that in front of me either but um, I think we're uh, happy to. I'm happy to email that out to everyone once the to everyone who's registered. Um, okay. Once the challenge begins, yep. That sounds good. And you'll see, um, you'll know exactly how many organizations are participating once the challenge begins because they'll all be listed on the leaderboard for the grand prizes. Um, you'll know exactly who you're competing against, um, the exact number of organizations you're competing against. Uh, so you'll have all of that information um, right there for you. Um, we we really like to do that because it it that's really what provides that sense of competition for your donors um, and helps get them engaged even more um, when they can see that you know you're just a couple hundred dollars beneath the you know one of the grand prize places um, and they can see who that organization is. It's it's much more satisfying for them to see you be able to jump. Um, spots on the leaderboard. So you'll have all the information um, as soon as the challenge launches. Yeah, and if it's helpful, I guess I'll just kind of reiterate that um, this this is open to our Engage Michigan conference and district projects. So I think in the invitation email I sent, it was to, I think, just around 50, 50 of those projects. Um, I'll share that our goal is to have at least 30 participate. And it looks like um, there might be about 13 people on this webinar right now, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so just two more questions. Um, let's see, can donors from overseas be accommodated? Yes. Yeah. So um, Mighty Cause accepts donations. Um, from you know countries overseas um we're able to process those donations so they shouldn't have a problem um donating if they wanted to donate to your campaign um and then what happens to our organization's page when the engage mi challenge is over um great question so um the leaderboard will freeze um but for your um organization's profile that you know you're still able to manipulate it and um utilize that for you know year-round fundraising if you wanted um so you can change the text on it you can update the pictures you can change your goal um you can put like you know if you wanted to put a congratulatory um message within your story section to um you know bring when donors come back to the page to see um then then you'll you'll have that information there and um the um I, the donate buttons will will still be on um but any money that you collect after the challenge is over won't be obviously like won't be counted towards any of the the prizes but you're still able to to utilize that page for fundraising um if you wanted to after the uh challenge is over Let's see. Um, I think that was it. I think I got everything. Um, 
Let's see if anyone has any other questions that they think of after the fact. Um, again, you can email support at mightycause.com. Um, I'm also available, uh, dawn at mightycause.com. Um, so, um, you know, thanks again for um, joining today's webinar. I am just really excited about the launch of this challenge. Um, so, Paul, do you have any parting words for us? No, thank you, Don. Thanks for everybody for being on today and um, blessings and good luck on the challenge. Um, if there's any any assistance or questions that you have for me, please feel free to email me um, or give me a call. Yeah, thanks everyone. Best of luck in the challenge.